Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the University of Portsmouth graduation ceremony. Before the ceremony begins, we would like to share with you some of our students' achievements. Please enjoy our short Alumni Association video. At the time that I was at Portsmouth, I think it helped me realise my ambition. I came in a normal working class girl from Reading. I think I found my voice when I was at Portsmouth. Excited. Nervous. Relief. Adventurous. My very first day at Portsmouth, there was a mixture of trepidation. I was moving away from home for the first time. It was quite daunting. I had been in a place with that many people, but then that soon flipped around because you realise everyone else is more scared than you are. My fondest memories of my time at Portsmouth have been the friendships that I've made and also just being inspired in the lectures. It was so exciting to be at uni and be straight away in like a live broadcast environment and that first initial memory has sort of sparked something that hopefully I'll continue for the rest of my life. It's definitely made me a confident young lady that can go forward now and I wouldn't really hesitate to take on anything in life. The emotion I felt when I was sitting in graduation hall was something surreal. It was the end result of a lot of hard work. I can remember all of those days sat down thinking, I don't understand what I'm writing about here or I don't know how to reference. Thinking back to how far I'd come along the whole journey and then handing that piece in and then receiving the results, it was a very special moment. It's been an amazing experience. If I could do it all again, I would. What excites me the most for the future is that I can be Part of what I was thinking of being when I started in university, actually make those bridges and those buildings and say that I've done this and feel quite great for it. Since I graduated from Portsmouth, I haven't been able to keep away. I've kept in touch with the alumni team. I've done some volunteering with them, so I've been back a couple of times to do Facebook Lives, so I've hosted some events. The careers and employability, they went above and beyond. And to know that they were there for five years after I finished university helped with the pressure of the real world. I benefited from the postgraduate scholarship and I think that has been amazing in terms of making it easier and less stressful to go and do a master. It isn't the end of your journey in Portsmouth. Portsmouth will always be here for you and as an alumni, there is so much more to offer. I am incredibly proud to always be part of Portsmouth. It is part of my soul. It's part of who I am today. It's made me who I am today and to be able to go back and keep giving back is great.
Today is an important day in the life of the university, a day to celebrate the success of our graduates. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you here today, and it also gives me great pleasure to declare this congregation of the University of Portsmouth open. Please sit down. Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and graduates, it is a great privilege to welcome you to our university and city for this great event. Graduation is a special time for students, for family and friends, and for university staff too. For our students, today is a key stopping point, perhaps a time for decisions. Some of you will carry on studying at Portsmouth or elsewhere, Others of you will move straight to careers that you've been planning for some time. Some of you might take a little longer to decide what your next steps will be, as many of us do. And some of you will be off to foreign lands and have an adventure there. For most of you, today is your last day with us, having achieved what you set out to achieve when you joined us some time ago. Since you've been with us, there have been many challenges. You will have faced personal challenges and together we have had to deal with the pandemic. I have constantly been amazed and overwhelmed by how you did your part to keep everyone safe as well as staying focused on your studies through some very difficult times. Because you have overcome so many challenges to be here today, it gives me particular pleasure to be able to personally and on behalf of the staff at the university congratulate you on your well-earned achievement. I am immensely proud of you all, as you should be. Today is also a very special day for your family and friends, some of whom are here with you today. Family and friends will have seen you grow and go off to university. Now they're with you to celebrate the end of one stage of your journey and the start of another. This is an important moment in their lives too, They've supported you, worried about you, inspired you, and encouraged you. Your parents, partners, children, wider family and friends have been vital support networks. I think it's appropriate that you, our graduates, should join me in thanking your family and friends who are here today. So I'm going to ask you graduates to stand now, please, if you would. Please feel free to face your families, give them a wave. Great opportunity, families, for photos. <laughs> now, graduates, this is the chance to thank your supporters with a resounding round of applause. That was a good practice, but let's do that again now with some real gusto. <laughs> now, that's more like the enthusiasm that I see out on Guildhall Walk of an evening. Please be seated, graduates. Graduation is also a special time for my university colleagues who, have, who will have seen you grown intellectually, socially, and emotionally. They have played a significant role in that growth. I want to thank them too for their support of you. The pandemic has been a very difficult time for them as well. And through it all, their priority has been supporting you to reach this day. I hope that as soon-to-be university graduates, you are confident that you are graduating from a university that is recognized as part of the modern global elite of universities, tackling the real challenges of the 21st century. We have the best TEF Gold rating for our teaching. We have, been, we have more academic staff producing more world-class research than ever before, and our research and innovation is helping to make the world a better place. For example, through our work on enzymes, we are pushing scientific boundaries to make plastics recyclable. 
Through Revolution Plastics, we are leading the way in international policy making on sustainability and climate change. Through our Extreme Environments Lab and in our work with the RNLI, we are improving water safety, international policy and UK policies, changing behaviour and practice and saving lives in the water. Through the International Centre for Forensic Psychology, we are changing training and practice for securing evidence and gathering intelligence, including enhancing lie detection in security, military and forensic settings. But we plan more, much more. The university has a vision that by 2030, we will be the top modern university nationally and one of the top 100 young universities globally. We hope that as we realize our vision, we will make you even more proud of your association with us. And across the world, there are certainly many difficult challenges for you to focus on with your new knowledge and skills. It can be easy to be pessimistic or feel anxious, but days like today are the reason why I am optimistic. When I look at you, I see passionate, highly skilled and educated people full of ideas, ready and prepared to reshape our world. Seeing you all today gives me tr a tremendous feeling of hope and a welcome reminder that whatever our difficulties, our future is in good hands, your hands, and I hope you feel that too. You will be the future leaders, thinkers, creators, and innovators that this country and world desperately needs. Please make use of our excellent alumni association to support you to realize this. And when you are successful, as I know you will be, please keep in touch, let us know what you're doing, and perhaps even come back to inspire a future generation of Portsmouth students. Finally, I urge you to live by the values of your university in all that you do. Be responsible, be open, and be ambitious. I congratulate you all on your awards today and wish you every success for your future. Congratulations. <laughs> Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, the university has resolved to confer the award of Fellow of the University Honoris Causa upon Kath Longhurst. As a university, we aim to ensure that the advantages that flow from engagement in higher education are available to all with the potential to succeed. To help achieve this aim, we work in partnership with individuals and organisations that share our ambition, values and passion. Kath Longhurst, today's honorary graduate, is one such individual. As a qualified youth and community worker, Kath came to Portsmouth in 1990 as a youth work team leader, working with others across Portsmouth and South East Hampshire on a variety of programmes, including with young people on the streets and those at risk from exclusion from school. The aim, of course, was to provide accessible support for young people in very difficult situations and to help them to a better future. In 2001, Kath became the Chief Executive of the Education Business Partnership, EBP, a not-for-profit company with a mission to connect businesses with education and then, through those connections, to broaden young people's horizons for the world of work. Under her leadership, EBP grew from a small business with just seven staff to a company employing 37 staff and providing 78,000 volunteering hours benefiting 20,000 young people annually. What EBP was able to provide was the opportunity for young people to see themselves in role models they could identify with. Through their interactions with inspiring mentors, they were supported and able to develop a vision for what they wanted to do. So even though they might be struggling at school, 
their horizons were opened up. It's really difficult to overemphasize the importance of opening the eyes of young people to the spectrum of what might and could constitute their futures. A specific example of this work was the Changing Mindsets project that was delivered in partnership with Prof. Sharia Hoskins and her team, our Exec Dean of um, Science and Health. This project was to support the development of resilience to educational challenge in year five pupils and to both expand and extend their career expectations. Among the 600 participants, the project interventions were found not just to improve literacy, but also resilience through the development of a growth mindset. Over the course of her 20 years at the helm of EBP, about 280,000 young people have been helped to succeed, and there have been other lasting legacies, such as Express FM, a community radio station that the university remains proud to support. Having left EBP in 20,000, sorry, not 20,000, 2021, um, Kath now invests her time in providing leadership coaching and consultancy. Working with teams and individuals, she supports them to grow and work effectively and to both recognize and develop good leadership. I honestly think her expertise could be deployed to good effect in central government at the moment. Running through all that Kath has and continues to do is a drive to help people be comfortable with who they are, to be true to themselves, and to both recognize and fulfill their potential. Kath brings passion, commitment, and determination to all that she does, and that includes being both an obsessive sailor, very competitive, but also involved in instructing others, and also as a year-round sea swimmer, an activity that, and I quote, makes her feel amazing. Kath Longhurst, for all your amazing work in supporting young people in the city and region, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon you a fellowship of the university honoris causa. Thank you so much. Um, and I first of all want to congratulate everybody here today for the completion of your degrees. In normal circumstances, gaining a degree is a huge achievement. But to do that with all that's been going on over the last couple of years um, is not to be underestimated. You should all feel very proud that you've got to this point with all that has meant for so many of you. So huge congratulations. When I started out as CEO of the Education Business Partnership 21 years ago, it was a job I had never imagined doing and one that I almost didn't apply for. It was only the encouragement of my partner, Tracy, that gave me the self-belief I needed to go for the job. I had never imagined I could be someone called a CEO. So I was even more surprised when they gave me the job. Um, and I spent that first year lurching between sheer terror, amazement, and anxiety, um, just feeling that I wasn't the right person in that job. How could this be for me? Um, luckily, nobody in my team noticed or seemed to notice. And it was just Tracy who had to put up with the daily rants about me not being good enough for the job. Eventually, however, I forgot that I felt like an imposter and I started to feel like I fitted the role. Most importantly, I always believed in what we were doing, and it was my belief in the work that we were doing that kept me going when things got really tough. I truly believe that young people, and especially young people from disadvantaged backgrounds, really benefit from opportunities to meet other people who do a wide variety of job roles, and different careers, and to see that just because someone has an important title, they're still human, they're still like us, we are all still human. Some of my most inspiring moments were seeing young people get that light bulb moment, 
when suddenly they could see a future for themselves. They could see someone doing a job they never imagined themselves doing, and they could imagine it for themselves. And that was why I did what I did for 20 years. Having somebody believe in them and encourage them and just believe in who they were made so much difference. I've learned so much over the course of my careers, and now as a leadership coach, working with other leaders and teams, I'm more aware of, uh, than ever of how important those lessons are. And I think the first thing I would say to everybody start going ahead in your career is, if you haven't already worked out, work out what is really important to you. So what matters to you above everything else? Don't be dragged along by what society tells you is success, and certainly don't believe there's only one kind of success. Success is what it means to you, and what's important to you and what your values are. Once you know your own values, you can be guided by those, and you won't be unraveled when things get really difficult. Sometimes being true to yourself can be incredibly hard. For me, being open about my relationship, especially 25 years ago, was challenging and difficult, but I absolutely know that it was right to be open about who I am, and I've never regretted it for a moment. Secondly, I would say, don't stop learning. Treat today as both an achievement, but also a reminder of your capacity to keep learning, and then keep on learning. You're never too old, and one of the things that I love about what I do now is it's a new opportunity to learn new things. And lastly, I would say, find people who are on your side, who will be honest with you and will have your back. I am incredibly lucky to have a very supportive family. I want to say thank you to my parents who are here, um, to my children, to my family, my brothers and sisters, for their ongoing love and support even when they might have wished I'd do things differently. And especially to my partner for her never-ending support and belief in me. Thank you all and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you, Kath, for that inspiring speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the formal part of the ceremony and I invite Professor Paul Hayes and the Deputy Academic Registrar to make the formal declarations after which the students will process. They will be congratulated first by Professor Hayes and then by myself, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science and Health. Before that though, while we are getting the students ready for their procession, we have prepared a short film for you congratulating our students from colleagues around the university. It is my sincere pleasure to bring you warm wishes and congratulations on your graduation. Massive congratulations from me to you on completing your degree and becoming a 2022 graduate of the University of Portsmouth. You have achieved something extraordinary and the university is very proud of you and your classmates, the class of 22. Congratulations from the Mycourt Huckfield team. Whee! It's been the most incredible few years and you should be so very proud of everything that you've achieved during your time here. All of the staff here at the university are also incredibly proud of where you are today. We're all extremely very proud of you and we hope to see some of you again soon doing some postgrad studies later on in the future. We look forward to seeing you move forward with many more wonderful achievements and milestones in your life ahead. We are committed to supporting you into the future and being part of your onward journey. You're now part of a global family of more than 250,000 Portsmouth alumni. I'm privileged to be a part of it too. I still remember the sense of pride and happiness from my mum and dad seeing me walk across the stage of the Guildhall. Well done for your achievements. You should be proud of yourself. All the best for your futures. Congratulations. From everyone at the chaplaincy team. Congratulations and enjoy your special day. Take time to celebrate all you've achieved. The memories you've gathered, the friends you've made, 
and the person that you've become. My advice to you is to acknowledge the voices in your head, be attuned to the feelings in your heart, but always, always trust your gut. You've got this. I thank you for trusting those precious years to the University of Portsmouth and wish you all the very best for the many exciting things that life will offer you in the future. It is all about you and celebrating with your friends and family. And remember, you will always be part of Portsmouth. Congratulations on your graduation. Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, as Deputy Academic Registrar, I certify that all those presented at this ceremony have successfully completed their studies and have satisfied all conditions and requirements of the university. By the authority of the university, I confirm that all those who are duly qualified are hereby admitted to the awards for which they are presented. Okay, so at this point in the ceremony then, our graduates will cross the stage and some of them find that a very nerve-wracking experience. It will help them along their way if you clap and cheer every one of them as they come across the stage. There are no rules here. You can make as much noise as you like. <laughs> and the competition is pretty stiff from the first ceremony this morning. <laughs> Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. For the award of Bachelor of Science in Criminology and Forensic Studies, Sarisha Reagan. For the award of Bachelor of Nursing in Adult Nursing, Nancy Peggy Asman. But this concludes the presentation from the students from the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Independent Prime, uh, Prescribing and Pharmacists, Anna Bava. <laughs> Hashim Chowdhury. Alison Evans. Claire Firth. Rezwan Al Islam. Chintin Mystery. The award of Postgraduate Certificate in Pharmacovigilance, Richard Talvin. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Prescribing and Therapeutics, Catherine Lacey. Sanam Yasin Horton. For the award of Postgraduate Diploma in Pharmacovigilance, Hilan Barmani. <laughs> Ashish Vyas. <laughs> For the award of Master of Research in Science, Biological Sciences, Simran Dosaju. Katie 
sorry, Kane Marino McDade. Arusha Padale. For the award of Master of Research in Science, Microbiology, Finlay Hickley. <laughs> Philippus de Cosdis. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science in Medical Biotechnology, Oyendamola Esther Adenuba. Manshu Agawal. Omogbolahan Damalara Ina David. Jamaka Amadi. Fatayat Adi Piju Besiriu. Ellen Choi. <laughs> Jeremiah Echo. <laughs> Sophia El Alami. <laughs> Shriya Samlal Giri. I am Ayamusa, good news. <laughs> Nadrat Jahan. <laughs> Ethan Kama. <laughs> Cameron Majid Khan. Murad Ahmed Khan. <laughs> Elaine Neen Xiaoyin. <laughs> Garain Zhu Makaku Ru. <laughs> Mohammed Adali Mohammed. Mohammed Siful Islam Nahid. <laughs> Abraham Orwa. <laughs> Diana Rojan. <laughs> Olga Sandoval Boxkowska. Adil Sheikh. <laughs> Eden Stewart Lewis. <laughs> Shruta Sudra. <laughs> Faria Tassin. Audrey Claude Tisusa. <laughs> Patrick Kuma Ajakuma Bahira. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science in Pharmacovigilance, Kerry Wall. For the award of professional doctorate in biomedical sciences for a program of research in the evaluation of salivary soluble TREM-L, IL-8 and IL-3 as diagnostic markers in chronic uh, uticaria? <laughs> uticaria at the University Hospital Southampton. Witness Zobu.
for the award of Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences for a program of research in the changes in cognitive function and behavioral responses associated with neuropsychiatric disorders, Melanie Keel. Sorry, Madeline Keel. Madeline Keel. For a program of research in investigating the safety of anti malaria drugs, Ashley Croft. For a program of research in amyloid beta, oglima dependent modulation of gastrointestinal contractility, implications of dysmobility in Alzheimer's disease, Adina Gibbard. For a program of research in the prevalence of functional trait and distal limb asymmetries and their effects on equine performance, Kirsty Leskiak. <laughs> For a program of research in streamlining the interventional pathway in malignant pleural disease, Rachel Mercer. <laughs> For a program of research in the development of novel, simple, sensitive, rapid, cost-effective diagnostic assay for the detection of myotheliosoma, Laura Moody. <laughs> for a program of research in the hope and hype in Parkinson's disease treatments, Ahmed Sayed Abduel Sayed Najida. For a program of research in the novel endoscopic imaging technology for the diagnosis and management of early gastrointestinal neoplasma, Shamila Subramaniam. <laughs> for a program of research in the role of immunosuppressive cells and immune checkpoints in the development and progression of colorectal and breast cancers, Mohamed Tor. For a program of research in evidence-based surgery, evaluating outcome, measurement, methodology, and reporting quality, Anka Kajaria. <laughs> Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of students from the School of Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences. Sorry, we have one more. <laughs> For a program of research in the role of TAM signaling in the glial response to the central nervous system inflammation, Shannon Gilchrist. <laughs> that does conclude the graduates from the School of Pharmacy and Biomedical Science. Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, I present to you the following successful candidates from the School of Health and Care Professions. For the award of Master of Science in Physician Associate Studies, Samantha Cork. <laughs> Peter Dalrymple. <laughs> Haley Irvin. Courtney Mason. <laughs> Sophia Matthews. <laughs> Hadra Nahid. <laughs> Tabarakan Tamaratnam. Romeo Kristen Ferrello. <laughs> Luella Vaz. <laughs> Ms. 
Joshua Wells. Harriet Wilson. Megan Woods. For the award of Master of Science in Social Work, Eric Enchao. Olu Bukola Abiodun Akinlei. Angela Duggan. Holly Farmer. Katie Gallup. Ikene Iguayano. Shamila Khan. Boku Mukelsitek Bayamuya. Matilda Niako. Olutoyin Olawabunmi Aladukyo. Ogian Komi, gift on a bray. Alexander Paxi Smith. Samri Sidi. With the Lawrence Taylor Award, Grace Janaka Bengisai. Elusefi Udiagbi Wuli Eni Momo. Lauren Wright. For the award of Postgraduate Diploma in Applied Social Studies, Olaniki Adiduora. Oda Agar. Kalena Cassell. Mafaro Siberia Olisi. Jade Young. For the award of Professional Doctorate in Health Science, for a program of research in the challenges of implementing quality of care into practice amongst care providers for people with complex needs, Elena Ruwaju Obayomi Ajaye. the award of Doctor of Philosophy in Health and Care Professions for a program of research in the context of falls and force prevention amongst older people in Kuwait, a mixed methods exploration, Hadil Haseli. For a program of research in the evolution and scale up of global HIV testing service approaches 2000 to 2020, Vincent Joseph Wong. Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of the students from the School of Health and Care Professions and the ceremony. At this point in the ceremony, we hear from our Chancellor, Karen Blackett. Unfortunately, she's unable to be here in person today, but she has recorded a special message for you, our graduates. Hi, I'm Karen Blackett and I am the Chancellor of the University. Massive congratulations from me to you on completing your degree and becoming a 2022 graduate of the University of Portsmouth. We have something in common. 
I am also a graduate of the university and have been where you are today, albeit nearly 30 years ago. Although it was a very long time ago, I still remember the sense of pride and happiness from my mum and dad seeing me walk across the stage of the Guildhall. They were first generation immigrants from Barbados to the UK and my graduation was a huge achievement for them both, not just me. I also remember my own overwhelming feeling of relief and happiness that I had done it, but also slight trepidation about what was next. Getting my degree was the first big step in a lifelong journey of learning, and I continue to learn and develop every single day. Graduating is an amazing achievement. I hope you take the time to pause for a moment and really celebrate. Take the time to reflect on what you have just accomplished and your time at Portsmouth. Please share your stories of your next steps. We love to hear about the great things our graduates are doing as it inspires the next generation. Now, as you enter the next phase of your lifelong journey of learning, you will face constant changes. There will be many highs, but there will also be bumps in the road. The socio-political environment we find ourselves in today may be bringing some anxiety. The outbreak of war in the Ukraine, rising inflation and the cost of living are all real challenges that we face. This environment, combined with the constant arrival of new technological developments, innovations and changes in ways of working, means that we find ourselves living constantly in what psychologists call the learning dip. During the period when you are learning something new, your performance will naturally dip. But over time, as you get more experience, your performance rises again. The issue for all of us, however, is that we're constantly having to learn new things as the world is changing so quickly. Hence, we are constantly being plunged into the dip, which can trigger fear and worry. Worry that we will initially not be totally competent and that we'll get ourselves into trouble as a result. This naturally affects our confidence. So when this happens, I want you to remember something for me. Whenever you feel like you can't, I want you to turn that thought into, I can't yet. Because you will be able to do it, whatever it is. With the right support, encouragement and perseverance, you can and you will achieve. You have so much to offer. We believe in you. I believe in you. The university will be there to support you and be your cheerleaders. You're now part of a global family of more than 250,000 Portsmouth alumni. I'm privileged to be a part of it too. Make the most of the wonderful connections, networks and mentoring that this community opens up. You will have times ahead where you are not sure about what the right decision is. What is the right thing to do? My advice to you is to acknowledge the voices in your head, be attuned to the feelings in your heart, but always, always trust your gut. You've got this. Now, one last thing, and it's important. Please take the time to look up from your screens and look around you. Really look. You can change the world by starting with the world immediately around you. You have the ability to make it a much, much better place. I genuinely believe that every single one of us has a superpower inside us. Find it, nurture it and use it. That is an amazing gift and please use it wisely. I'm really relying on you to do this. But right now, However, it's all about you and celebrating with your friends and family. Enjoy. You deserve it. And remember, you will always be part of Portsmouth. Congratulations in graduating in 2022. I would like to um, extend my congratulations to our graduates. You've achieved great things. And I'd also like to extend my thanks to all of those who have supported you through your studies here in Portsmouth. 
I'm sure after we all leave the hall, you will celebrate with friends in Guildhall Square, but then could I urge you to go down to Ravelin Park where there are refreshments available and you can continue your celebrations for as long as you like down in the park. That brings us to the end of the ceremony, so I now formally declare this congregation of the University of Portsmouth closed. Could you please stand up for the academic procession? Thank you.